So I took a standard piece of mathematics homework about percentages and I put them through a AI chatbot. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, you know, what is this happening? What have we done here, right? Are we looking at a scenario in the in a very near future where we have children just lazing around, you know, watching TV, playing games, and they have this automaton, almost like a automatic robot vacuum, and it's just going around and doing their work for them. And of course, it's getting better. So now, um, staying in the same area. So I gave another set of challenges to uh, to AI. And this one, uh, look at the, um, basically, there is an example. It doesn't give any explanation, but it gives an example. Um, and then it gives you a problem to solve. So we'll look at problem number 18. So look at the example in the green boxes and then look at problem 18, which is in the white section below. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds first before I get into what these are. Okay, so my answer for is number four because basically the the example shows that this is a um, it's basically a multiplication. The so center number in the circle is getting multiplied by the other and then getting added. So basically, if you look at the example eighteen, it is three times three plus three times two plus three times one, and the answer is eighteen. So that's your left hand side. Same thing over here, if you look at the question number 18 now, um, basically it will be 5 times 2, which is 10, 5 times 4, which is 20, so that's 10 plus 20, that's 30. We need the answer to be 50, so we need uh, a multiplier which will bring give us 20, and so that's 4. So the answer is um, C. Now again, when I gave this image to uh, Google Bard, don't know what it came up with. Um, uh, it came up with the right answer, but its explanation, um, I just could not figure out. I think uh, Google Bard is thinking it's a sequence problem. It came up with the answer, but the explanation just doesn't make sense at all. And I asked for more clarification. And again, um, it's doing something which is totally um, garbled for me and maybe if one of you can look at it and see if there's something that you can make sense out of it it came up with the right answer though um so now uh, did the same thing and this time i put it on bing the same set of problem bing came out thinking it's a probability problem <laughs> and it comes up with totally different answers so um again the point being that if you um you know, the the higher cognitive demand challenges really challenge the the AI at this point in time. Now, if you, if a child could figure out that this is actually is an equation problem, then they can put an equation together and then input the equation and ask the uh, AI to solve. So for example, in this case, you put an equation saying, um, now you solve for X. Then, and this one actually went into chat GPT. Chat GPT came up with the right answer. Okay, and also an explanation on how to solve the equation. But again, it needed the child to say it's an equation. So for the child to actually figure out, looking at the diagram, what the pattern meant. All right, so we'll leave it at this. And again, there are more questions in here, but I'm going to keep moving on from here. We see the same pattern. So now let's think about with all these um, uh these examples, the math problems that we have seen, what can we understand? Can we think of a, a different future image, right? In the, uh, I showed you in the prior slides that we were getting worried that what if all these AI tools make our kids lazy with the automaton just doing the work for them? But now that we have seen that these automatons actually do need help, right? So what if we actually, we are looking at a different picture, different future picture, and let me present this one, right? So in this future state, the child, you see the child, the child is in full control of their learning, right? They're holding the handle, so they're on an electric bike. They're in full control, they know where they're navigating to, they, they can navigate, they can change the direction and they they need to be in total charge of what they're doing but they do have the convenience because it's an electric bike so they don't have to pedal anymore okay so we've given them a convenience but they're still in charge of their learning and that's an image that basically gives more empowerment to 
to our students in terms of they in charge of where they're going with their education. So they are a curious explorer on a riding on an electric bike, okay? Um, and it's just like having a calculator, right? They got a device that could help them, but they still had to know, you know, how to go solve and do what they were supposed to do. And now let's think about the future state for, for you, for us, the educators, the teachers, right? And I really believe that it's something which could be um, uh, a little bit different than what, what we, have been, um, we have been used to. So in 1998, the first computer assisted bone segment navigation uh, took place in Germany. It's a surgical procedure that basically allows um, to find the position of displaced bone fragments. So if somebody actually went through like an um, accident and they had bone fragments all over, so it allows um, the this computer device would allow you to see where those fragments are, or it can also assist in positioning the bones uh, like the artificial uh, fragments that were created uh, during surgery, they could be placed at the right places. So it's mainly used for jaw reconstruction surgery. But in this procedure and similar other procedures, now of course we have other procedures like this where surgeons have these, these tools that are monitoring while they're doing their surgery and the operations. The surgeon is in full control, but with the help of these high-tech tools, they're able to more precisely go and work on that patient and actually, you know, do... Um, um, do the the job in a more effective way in a similar capacity for the teachers now now you have high tech tools that you can deploy as you create more precision in how you're educating students what do i mean by that as you create more personalized experiences in education for your students and I think that's the that's the beauty of the future of AI is the child on this electric bike and teach us with their own set of high tech tools. So we both got both the teacher and the students have the these tools that are helping them being more effective. And you can still control you still are in control of what you do. Now, um, how do we get there? So a couple of quick things here, and I have four strategies um, to think about. The first one is you have the vacuum cleared up. You have personal tutors personalize. You have the gloves go hands on. You have the elevator ascend. Now, what do I mean with, by all of these? Okay, and I'm going to go and go into more details explaining all that. Uh, next, you, you ascend on the Bloom's taxonomy. So many of you would be familiar with this taxonomy. It's, um, it's used for um, lesson planning, assessing and teaching. Basically, it's the, it's the hierarchy of cognitive skills. And at the lower levels, you have more mundane, you know, recalling of facts and basic concepts, going to explain, explaining the facts, understanding the key ideas. And then on the top higher levels, actually applying them, analyzing them, evaluating, and then creating something new based on what you've learned. And that's the, um, it was developed by a committee that Benjamin Bloom chaired back in the 1950s, I believe. Um, so um, the, the key here is that the, the lower level where you are in the remembering understanding phase, the AIs are doing pretty well as we saw in some of the mathematics example, right? Um, the higher up is where, again, it's more human to be able to create something new. And that's where um, you can now, because, again, because now you have um, some more time in your hand with your AI assistant, to actually rise up a little bit more into those um, cognitive levels with your students. Now, um, staying with that uh, second law of motion that I mentioned to you before, you know, at a remember level, it's as simple as saying, okay, tell me the formula uh, of the second law of motion. But when you go to the understanding level, it's more about, okay, describe the relationship in your own words. You know, what, is, what does that formula mean? Um, when you get into the um, application phase, you are looking at, okay, show me an experiment to demonstrate the second law of motion. In the analyzing phase, it, it's something along the lines of compare and contrast real-world examples of objects uh, following second law of motion. 
in evaluation, you could have a prompt something like assess the impact of second law of motion on various aspects of technology and engineering. And creation would be use second law of motion to create, maybe do an engineering design project and create something, um, some vehicle, for example. Okay. So again, um, uh, it, this, this then allows you to go higher up um, and spend more time on those higher cognition um, domains. So um, now the, what you can practically do is check your own answers. So for example, if they are coming up with um, um, answers um, by themselves, you can actually help them say, okay, go check with AI. So you can have the students check their own answers now. And if in fact, the way I showed you how they were, how the different chatbots were coming up with different answers, um, now the students have to figure out which answer is correct. And for that, again, that requires some level of that higher order of thinking to see, um, to evaluate and to figure out, you know, which one is the right one of all these things. And if they came up with, uh, uh, if they believe something is incorrect, then be able to even, you know, say why they think it's incorrect. Um, you can have children look for biases. Now it's interesting. Um, I did see that some chat bots actually kind of uh, like, especially chat GPT was trying to steer clear from any of the biases. But uh, Bing, um, the question I asked was, give me a five paragraph essay on pro pros and cons of abortion debate. It came up with um, some things and then it gives me, gives its own opinion. My own view on abortion is which is interesting, quite interesting for an AI bot to give an opinion. But anyhow, you do want the children to start to look for these biases in the, um, in the responses that they're getting and have them critique, critique, critique that, right? Um, where, does that, where is that coming from? Um, you can also have children look um, research based on diverse personas. So uh, for example, here in the, these prompts, I uh, asked the chat bot to imagine a certain persona and give me an answer. So for example, here I said, imagine I'm an Asian student. What is the impact of affirmative action for me? And then I asked the same question. I am a black student. What is the impact of affirmative action on me? And you can see the different differences in responses uh, on how, um, uh, and this one is Google, how it came up with different responses and the different, and this can allow the child to look at uh, the diverse perspectives um, on, you know, on a same issue. Industry connections, as we showed in one of the other, um, uh, where, where you actually are asking the child to find out industry connections of what they're learning, you could actually have them share what they learned about the connections with other students, and that way they can get more of that career awareness right from the very beginning. Uh, metacognition, this is where you can focus some of the energy on how children are thinking about their own thinking and how they can control the thought process. Um, uh, that, there's a lot more in there. Of course, we'll not have time to cover all of those aspects here, and we'll cover that at a later point in some more details. Um, the fifth strategy, of course, I shared with you four of them, right? So can't leave you without the fifth one. Um, this is where you want to inspire resilient creation, leveraging human curiosity. The biggest element here is that be human and that's the big thing right um, irrespective of the evolution of ai the most important element of a teacher student relationship is that uh, it helps the student develop more of the emotional intelligence the social uh, skills and the the skills of resilience adaptability and those elements are critical ai cannot copy that the ai is still far away from there so you need to have be that human in the child's life and inspire more and more of this resilience creation while they're creating things and we do have a framework um uh, we call it the seven c's framework um, roadmap of resilient creation i won't be able to go into details on that today but uh, you can scan that on the code and you will be able to see some more details on that that one. All right, so there you have it. This is the way to um, leverage AI in your classroom. And I can sum it up with this picture really, right? So if you imagine that um, the pyramid here is the blooms, uh, the cognitive skills pyramid that I talked about before, and the lower levels, which are submerged in water, and the water is that wave of AI, right? So the lower levels, um, yes, we do have AI kind of impacting those levels. And um, now the good thing is that you have, um, as teachers, you are equipped with resources 
So you have the augmented intelligence of an AI assistant. Students have the augmented intelligence of having an AI personalized tutor. And now equipped with those two um, elements, you can go hands on. Immerse yourself as you're trying to create experiences around these foundational learning elements, the concepts. And then as you're developing, as you're working through those elements, go higher up, rise along those cognitive um, levels. And while you're doing all of that, um, as a teacher, uh, continue to focus on the process, the learning process itself for the student, because you want to um, show them the way to be resilient, to be adaptable, to learn the social skills, the emotional intelligence, uh, while they are involved in this process of creation as they're rising up on the cognitive, le cognitive levels. So um, that's the way we leverage AI in the classrooms. Thank you so much. And uh, you can definitely go ahead and scan this uh, for additional resources. Um, and also there are some free information in here, materials that you can implement in your classroom right away. Um, and feel free to pass along to other teachers as well. Uh, this, this link will provide you, ask you to create a login and you will have a free access to all the resources. Thank you everyone. This is Moni Singh. Take care.